Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. So we're going to start back up with this series showing the progress of this necklace that I'm doing for the crystal ball. Well, hopefully. Um, time permitting. So I wanted to continue with this and I was sort of um, wanting that beak shape to be a little larger. Um, this is the part of the necklace that looks like the serpent eating the world and so I just sort of enlarged that beak just a tiny bit and did a bit more stitching. Now around the Skeksy face I thought um, I might use black. I wanted everything to kind of pop and I tried a few different variations. I was thinking at one stage maybe using crystal chain. Um, I had a look at some other colors as well, but realistically I thought, well, the um, black beads made the most sense with Skeksis to bring in that darkness and also mostly just to make the uh, face pop. I didn't want that to get too lost with everything else that's going on in the necklace. Now when you're doing seed beading like this, um, it's really good to have a think about the direction you want your seed beads to go in. Because I could have um, done that black background in any number of directions. I could have done straight stitching all the way across, um, all the way down. Um, but you can see I've decided to do it in a sort of circular organic shape that follows the direction of the outside. So that it just encircles the face. Now I did pop a few more seed beads around these uh, cabochons that I did earlier just to make them pop a little bit more. I have these size 15 gold beads so I just decided to do one of those for every second bead. Um, they were a little larger than I wanted. I didn't have them in the Charlottes so it didn't sort of hug the cabochon as much as I hoped, but I was happy enough with it. Now I decided to use a similar um, technique, or same technique really, that I used for the um, Augra necklace that you might have watched previously, where I'm doing these uh, herringbone or endobelly um, like tendrils that are coming out from around the face and then I'm using different size black beads to make it turn in different directions so um, using like a size 8 next to a size 11 for a few stitches for example will make it start to turn in a direction maybe even going up to a size 6 next to a size 11 um, and you know just changing up the direction so that it looks like these black tendrils are sort of swirling out from around the face. Now there was actually gaps in the um, there's like a brass backing to the Skeksy face and that had little holes in certain parts allowing me to sew the tendrils straight through and you know so sort of anchoring the Skeksy face as well as um, you know just creating that design feature. Now the only thing is they are a little hard to see because it is black on black. So when I was doing this I was um, thinking oh maybe I should have used a different colour. But you'll see what I do in a minute just to help them pop a little bit more. 
And realistically, I don't know that another colour would have worked for what I wanted. It needed to be dark and really um, to make that stand out. And the tendrils as well, I felt like they needed to be like the um, the darkness, you know, reaching out around the Skeksy face. So instead, I just started to use a stop stitch, um, which I'm doing at this point, and using different crystals. Some of them um, are the bicones, and some of them are sew-on stones. Um, and they're in various shades of grey and silver and they just add a little bit of sparkle and add a little bit of definition as well once I start popping those in and amongst where these tendrils are. Now the tendrils don't stand out a ton um, but honestly as well I don't want too much to take away from the face so I, I didn't want it to be too busy it was quite a difficult decision on what to do at this point to be honest I um, agonized over my decision making process for this part as far as color and you know the finer details So once I had finished with that part, I was ready to go on to the collar part of the necklace. Now, if you've been watching these videos from the start, you know that my initial design concept included not only having the um, serpent part with the Skeksy face and the trial by stone, but then also having one of the collar pieces that looks like the costumes worn by the Skeksis. So I wanted to sort of mirror elements of that I don't want it to be as big as the costumes it's just really to have a nod to that um, element of the Skeksis costume um, so I decided the easiest way to kind of get the shape I want was to use some um, paper that I sticky taped to my um, this is just a, a neck cuff it's called it's just like a brass um, piece that you can use to form a necklace around. Um, I used to have a really good supplier of these and I couldn't find them anymore. I did get this one on um, Etsy. So you can find them on Etsy uh, and I think there are some sellers in the states that sell different neck cuffs. So you can see I've done a rough sketch of the shape that I want to do for the um, collar part and then I'm using the ruler to really make sure that it is symmetrical and measure each side to the other side and try and get a consistent shape. So this is going to serve as my template for the felt. Um, I also folded it in half just to make sure because there was, there did end up being a couple of spots that weren't perfectly symmetrical so I just adjusted those. And you could just draw half of it and fold it over um, to create the other half.
Now the way I've done this template is so that when it is attached to that neck cuff it will stand up like one of the collars that the Skeksis wear and that's why I wanted to do a template first just to really make sure I get that shape happening um, and yeah this, this should give me the nice shape that I'm after. Now I decided to use fabric paint and I'm loving this stuff. It's been so helpful for a lot of my designs. Um, and I used the same colour that I've been using um, in the rest of the piece, which is that real bronzy coloured tone. Now I did have to make sure that I was happy with the um, shape of this and how it would interrelate with what I'd made previously which is the big serpent and Skeksy face because when I first did the sketch uh, I brought it down a bit too far um, where it goes to the point you know at the front and uh, it wouldn't have had enough room to have the um, the Skeksy face and serpent sitting nicely so I did adjust that um, and I also created a second one with purple and you'll see what I have in mind for that later if it all goes how I'm planning <laughs> um, but I won't go into that now because it's too hard to describe without sort of showing you and it may not work Now I really needed to bring in some of those elements of um, opulence and it's a very um, ostentatious, very old worldy, um, you know, almost ancient opulence that the Skeksis wear. Like there's this subtlety of colour and shade, um, there's a faded worn look to this opulent clothing that looks like they've been wearing it for a thousand years. Um, and so this lace I felt worked perfectly for that. It looks opulent and beautiful, but it just subtly changes some of the colors and it doesn't stand out too boldly. It really, um, it looks worn, worn in is what I was going for. Now because it does curve to a point, I couldn't use this lace all the way around. So you can see I'm trimming it there because at the point I needed to use a different type of lace that would bring it into that nice point shape. And I'm just using tacking stitches. This is just a very initial, um, you know, tacking on of the lace so that it will stay in place while I bead it and, you know, continue with the design. So I had these really nice gold lace pieces that had a pretty good shape to them for what I was after to come to a nice point. So I thought they would be perfect. Um, I kind of like that they do contrast in being a brighter gold because it's almost like a um, like a finding or like a um, like a filigree finish or flourish to the end of the necklace, if that makes sense. So, and I think with some beadwork, I can tie the two elements together nicely. So this is it for the moment, guys. There's heaps more to go on this one yet, I'm afraid. Um, I hope you're looking forward to seeing the videos. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're interested to see on how this turns out and the rest of the costume. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye, guys.